All I want us to do is just, we're going to obviously take all of our weight on our, on our hands when we're going into handstands and I just want you to start to just move your hands around in different positions and you should feel like when your fingers point more behind you, you're going to feel a bit of a stretch more on your forearms there and it's a lot of the time if we're doing any uh, like any gripping work where these flexors are working super hard particularly if you're false gripping rings for, for ring muscle ups everything that gets tight here on the, the flexor side is going to restrict us getting into that extension I want to be able to create a position where at least I can create a vertical position with my forearm so create 90 degrees at the wrist ideally I might even want to be able to come a little bit further forward so I can offset some of the balance that I'll need later or counterbalance that I'll need later in that sort of, some of those frog stand positions. So moving the hands around, don't, don't try to rip anything off, just start to feel and then take a little bit more weight on one side to the other and just encouraging just gently a little bit of uh, new range. Look at what happens if I go side on so you can see, just lean forward, not letting the base of the palm come off and just take a little bit of weight. You're going to feel a little bit more um, pressure going through the front of the wrist when we go into that shape. And just a little bit explore, a little bit side to side. Everyone's going to feel a little bit of tightness in different positions. So just have a feel of what it's like for you. And then last one that's quite nice to do is one at a time where fingers pointing back if you can, hand goes on top. If you do, everyone just do the right arm because I can then explain it to you easier. So right hand down, left hand on top. I'm then going to um, wind, so I'm going to go uh, anti-clockwise with my wrist. So wind that up and then try and sit back and you'll feel a pretty intense stretch. There, maintain the base of the palm on the floor. Rather than if I don't wind it up, <coughs> I'm losing a little bit of that tension. We talked a, we talked a, uh, talked a tiny bit about like being mindful with our movement yesterday, even like something as simple as your wrist, we can do the same thing. We're gonna to need to be pretty mindful and present in our handstand practice because if you're not focused on exactly what we need to be doing, because there's so much going on, then uh, you're not gonna be, uh, you're not setting yourself up for that success. Yeah. So we're gonna revisit some of the prep work we did yesterday and just build upon that for, um, for our handstands. If we're tight around the front of the shoulders, yeah, the chest, anterior delt, it's going, to it's going to make it difficult for us to get into good overhead positions because when the shoulders are rounded forward, we are not got the shoulder blade, uh, so yeah, the shoulder blade, the scapula and the humeral head in, in a good postural position to allow us into a good overhead shape. So we could go into that seated um, extension position. The hands going to go behind your back. Peel the shoulder blades back together, start to squeeze the shoulder blades so we get some activation at the back and then we're not going to we're going to try and make this as little about being static as possible so we're going to get us bum up off the floor we're going to start moving in and out of that position the whole time not letting the ear uh, the shoulders be sort of shrugged up by the ears drive those shoulder blades down move apart and then as you start to feel good in some of these positions just change it onto one side and get a little bit of movement away. Keep pushing the floor down, keep pushing yourself up, and then I'd like us to see whether we can start to if I come on, if you have a little, just have a little break and look. So I'm on that one arm, I'm trying to push this away and up. And I want to see, can I start to drive with hips, go past neutral, and can I start to get some extension through my spine? I want to try and get that extension coming as much as I can through the thoracic spine. We need thoracic extension to be able to get good arms overhead. And then just encouraging, what does that look like? A little bit of a single arm bridge type of shape, and then swap. Then go on to the other side. One then just for the wrist position. Rather than hands being behind the back, you're going to put them behind the So rather than being be facing behind you, hands are still going to go behind the back, but you're going to have your fingers pointing forward. You're going to feel this more than on your wrist. We're going to do then the same thing. 
Again, look, shoulders are forward. I've got to squeeze them back. Don't let them slump by ears. Drive the floor down, push away. And then can I encourage myself forward in that position? Still, you're going to feel, should feel even a little bit forward down. The forearms as you go forward, keep the base of the palm flat on the floor. But it's just encouraging a little bit more through the wrists. Nice. The same on one arm. But just be super progressive with it. Anyone do any bridges or wheels? It's just a nice, in terms of trying to get that. Arms overhead, shoulders in a nice overhead position, and that upper back trying to get into an extended shape. So you can build up if you want, to stick with the single arm progression if you can't. Nice. Even just starting to get up there. Nice, and then my, I'll just give it this have been enjoying these recently where I'm trying to do everything, linking all that together, so that single arm, that bridge, but then coming round into the other one, trying to actively be and getting good at pushing out and away, then having that control and stuff on one, on one side. But the idea is, for me to get decent overhead position, I've got to not only change what's happening at the shoulder, I want to be able to extend that spine so I can get into a better overhead shape. The better overhead shape I can get, the better that I've got an opportunity in my handstand to create a better shape. If I can't create a good shape standing up because my shoulders are tight in terms of the actual shoulder here, but a lot of what goes on is what's happening at the spine as well. That if I can't extend that thoracic, that's, think that your shoulder blades are sat on your rib cage, and your rib cage is dictated by where your spine is. So if my spine is rounded forward at the top, all of a sudden I've moved my, my rib cage is in a different position, my scapulas are in a different position, that's gonna affect how easy it is to get my arm overhead. The only way, if I'm in a poor position, I make it, I'm over exaggerating it, but if I'm in a poor position here with my spine, what happens to my shoulder, being forward, as far as I can get my arm up is about here, so the only way my hand goes over my head for a handstand is to change, make the change at the hip here to allow that shape. And I don't really wanna be in that type of shape when I'm doing my handstands, yeah? Not only from a, it looking nice, I'm also putting the shoulder in a compromised position. If anyone's ever had any like pain around and impingement around the front of the shoulder, a lot of the time it's to do with that humeral head being at the front and pushing on some of the tendons and tissue at the front of here that we don't really want to be jamming apart. We want to have a nice shape for um, the articulation of the shoulder to allow us for good movement, but also pain-free and good quality movement.